Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, as you can see, we're doing nothing. Wait, you're not Wendy Valencia. I'm I, Wendy Valencia. I am too. I'm a unicorn. Without a horn. <laughs> no horn, no horn unicorn. No horn unicorn. Now I'm going to go back to my Lego set, guys. I'll be watching. Seriously, if I get one more nasty comment or one more person talking about my vocal fry, thinking they're all smart, I'm gonna lose my mind. <laughs> I'm kidding. If you are new to my channel, I'm Wendy Valencia and I have a neurological disorder. And it makes me sound like a freak of nature. I know. Admittedly, there are some of you that don't really notice it. I don't know how, but I love all of you that don't notice it. Those of you who do, you know, it sounds like I'm cry I'm gonna cry or I'm getting all like verklempt. So unfair. Now I'm getting emotional. I'm a little verklempt. You're verklempt. <laughs> You're verklempt. I'm verklempt. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I just dated myself. Anyway, so I am making light of this because it's a sensitive issue for me. I'm embarrassed by it. I hate it. But let me tell you what it is. I have a form of dystonia called spasmodic torticollis and spasmodic dystonia. Now, dystonia is like a neurological disconnect between your muscles and your brain. So your muscles are in a constant state of contraction. It's actually really, really painful if you have ever gotten a crick in your neck that is exactly what it feels like at all times 24 7 without medication it's horrible i actually had it for years and had no idea it's one of those progressive things that gets worse as you get older but i've had it since i was probably late high school early college ish and it went undiagnosed for years and actually now as a result i always look a little bit to this direction because because my head was kind of like this for so long that my skull has kind of worn down in the back and so it's got a little divot so that's like my natural head position now is to kind of not look totally straight so in my videos y'all see a million jump cuts and most of the time that's because in those awkward pauses, I'm doing something like this. You're on a debt-free journey aiming to pay off two. So having this, because it's neurological, I will tell you that when I get nervous or stressed out or upset about something, it actually gets much, much worse. And normally, you know, for my job, I'm used to speaking in public. So that isn't so stressful to me, but one of the things that is, is oddly this, the mic, because it actually picks up on the local, like the reverberation. And what's really funny is you can actually see it when I'm editing my videos, you can actually see it in my voice. If you look at Mauricio or Melina, when they talk, their voice goes up and down gently. But if you look at my voice and you enlarge it, you can see it's constant peaks up and down. It is not something I can control. I wish I could. I wouldn't have it if I could control it. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. So if you guys um, are new to my channel, make sure to um, hit the notifications bell so you know whenever I post a new video and put uh, hit the like button the, with the thumbs up and press that um, subscribe button because it's fun to watch it turn gray. There's several things that make it worse. And like I said, the mic is a major problem for me because it's very sensitive. So sometimes my audio sounds worse than others. And I absolutely hate talking on the phone for that very reason because the, the phone also actually amplifies the reverberation. So it, it sounds more gravelly or whatever. I do get injections in my neck. So there are 26 muscles in your neck, evenly split half and half, obviously. So the big muscles in your neck go from here down to here are called the sternocleidomastoid 
gluteomastoid muscles, and I know I said that wrong, but it's a big word. <laughs> and then you have like your scalene muscles. And so I get 11 injections because I guess this side and the back of my neck is the worst. I get 11 injections from about here all the way around to the opposite side if you go diagonally. And all of those muscles are paralyzed, basically. I get disport or disport, depending on who you talk to. Um, I get those injections, which is kind of like a longer acting Botox to paralyze those muscles. And by doing that, it prevents those muscles from clenching and pulling my head to the side like this. And so once I started doing that, I found out I was in a tremendous amount of pain and didn't even realize it. So there are a couple of the injections, like this one that goes through here is, I guess, really dangerous because one of your big arteries, veins, goes through here. So he has to be real careful not to nick that while he's going in. And then there was one in the back that's like right here in the back of my, like right here, you know, that little bump you have on the back of your head at the bottom of your skull. There's one muscle he injects there and I swear, it's like a knife going into my brain. <laughs> it's horrible. But enough of that. That's just whining. But sometimes when I get the injections, for some reason, the e diaspora, disport, whatever you want to call it, migrates the wrong direction. And it actually causes me problems swallowing. So especially when I eat bread, if I don't have water with me, it actually will get like stuck in my throat. And I've, I've had it happen so many times now that I don't really panic. It, it definitely is, you know, choking, but I can breathe a little tad bit around it. So I just like calmly take a sip of water and it'll eventually go down. But when it, when it has migrated the wrong direction for whatever reason, um, it, it can be terribly, terribly scary. So I just actually try and avoid like bread products during the the three months that those those shots are you know active because what happens is every three months like clockwork it has to be exactly three months i go and get injections because come about 11 weeks my injections start wearing off and my head starts doing this and I generally don't notice my head doing this, but I do notice me saying, Mauricio, can you rub my neck? And he's like, when are you getting your injections? I'm like, next Wednesday. And he's like, oh yeah, okay, no problem. So I've had symptoms of it since I was little, little. Like when I was 10, my mother took me to the doctor for shaking hands. And, and I can't like, if you look, I can't hold my hands straight a shake when I get really tired my eyes actually shake which is really freaky <laughs> doesn't happen very often so oh, my mom noticed my hand shaking so she took me to the doctor for that and they diagnosed it as a benign familia tremor just a, a tremor that is hereditary related that really didn't do anything well now knowing what I know now it's actually an early symptom of dystonia so I noticed as I got older, I would go to like the dentist or the hairdresser and they would constantly be turning my head. And I'm like, why can't I keep my head in the same position for years? So at one point I came home, I was living in, I think Bogota at the time. And I came home and I needed new glasses. So I went in to get my glasses and it was right about the time I started wearing bifocals. And so I told the guy when I had when he was doing the bifocals, I, or when he was doing my prescription, I asked him if it would be possible to get the bifocals offset a little bit. I said, because I generally read like this with my head pointed this way, but looking straight down. So I'm actually looking kind of out of the sides of my eyes. And he looked at me like I was crazy. And so we did some reading examples and then he tested me to see if I had blind spots and issues like that and he ended up finding nothing so he referred me to a neurologist so i went to see this neurologist that i had never seen and at that time because this was you know 10 15 years ago it was before mauricio and i were married so at least 15 years ago um at that time this was 
a relatively uncommon procedure and there were only three doctors three to five doctors in the united states that actually did this procedure and by literally luck of the draw i picked a neurologist that specialized in these injections and i went in and he said i can't believe you came to me because it takes years to diagnose something like this and i'm usually the person that the doctor who's referred the doctor who's referred the doctor refers to when they finally figure it out so me coming in off the street is unheard of now it's a lot more common procedure and it's not such a big deal but back then it was it was a real big deal so my doctor as hearing my voice as it's gotten worse over the years he has offered me injections into my vocal cords which will essentially paralyze my vocal cords so that I don't have trouble talking because what happens is frequently my my vocal cords will spasm and it'll force me to like push the words out so my voice gets really loud and then quiet and really loud and then quiet and you can actually see it when i film you can see that it spikes up and then it drops down to a normal thing because that's just me forcing air through my vocal cords drives mauricio crazy because he's like why are you so loud and i'm like i have a neurological disorder what do you want me to do about it so the only other option i really had was to go see a vocal coach so i did see a vocal coach for quite a while and it was helpful but you know i can't repair what's going on there's nothing i can do with it so i basically just have to work around it so what happened was she taught me several different techniques to maybe get the words out more easily so you will notice i start sentences because the beginning of the sentence is the hardest thing for me to do I will start sentences with the word so because the word so is not a word that causes my vocal cords to cause me problems. So I can say so without a problem. One of the hardest words for me to say, oddly enough, and because I'm saying it in the middle of the sentence, I'm not going to have a problem because there's already air going through my vocal cords, but that is the word too. If I stop talking, and somebody asks me my phone number, I have real difficulty saying my phone number because there are several twos in it. <laughs> and so it, it inevitably, whenever anybody asks my phone number, they have to ask me to repeat it because they don't get at least three of the numbers in there because it's the, the jumble of the numbers that causes the problem. Whispering, I can whisper with no problem. But the hardest part of all of this is when I get comments and I get a lot of comments. I used to get lots of comments on my hair, but then my hair started falling out and I don't get those comments anymore, but I get lots and lots of comments on my voice. Some of them are really snarky, nasty comments of people saying like, I can't even watch your video because the audio is so bad. And I'm like, actually, the audio is pretty good. It's my voice that's bad. And, and sometimes people think that I'm like all upset about, you know, if we're talking about our debt, that I'm actually, you know, traumatized by it because I do from time to time sound like I'm going to cry. As my injections wear off, it tends to get worse and it tends to get harder to speak, but I just had my injections a week and a half ago. So I'm like at the height of not having a problem, which is why I decided to record this video today. But, but what bothers me is people are just mean. And it's, it's hard when you're on YouTube and you're trying to do something that might help somebody else who's struggling financially, you know, giving them like moral support or showing them, hey, if I can do it, you can do it. And you're out there and you're putting yourself out there and people say these horrible things. I mean, my voice is only one portion of the horrible things people have said to me. I've gotten some pretty nasty comments and it's difficult. What are you doing? <laughs> you got all dressed? Yeah, I got all ready, Jess. I, I, I got dressed when I got out of the shower. 
So, how long have you been behind me? So, it's going to be another video where my child is in there. Anyway. Guys, it's not nice to bully my mom like that. If you do, I will come out there and I will make sure that you don't get <laughs> Stop doing it. Okay. So, you want to close out the video with me? So, if you guys enjoyed, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye! So, I'll see you in the next one.